coming up on ATV News. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm another sandwich. Find out what's missing from the Fine Arts Building and how it's leaving some students hungry. It's a little obnoxious, but just got to roll with it. These fishermen have seen the good, the bad, and the swampy of the Manaway Reservoir. We'll show you why they keep coming back. These poles on campus can do more than just help in emergencies. Today we've had clouds, rain, and sun. I'll show you how long that pattern holds in weather. You want to see some touchdowns? Well, I've got plenty of them for you this week in sports. All that and more, this is ATV News. Welcome to this edition of ATV News. I'm Caden Anderson. And I'm Ariana Piper. We're going to start today by taking a second to recognize that today marks 18 years since the terrorist attack. Passengers took down the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania. One graced the Pentagon and two hit the World Trade Center towers. These photos are from the 9-11 Museum. These fountains are located where the towers once stood. They memorialize the people who lost their lives. The terrorists killed more than 3,000 people, and 400 of those people were first responders. President Trump held a private ceremony today at the Pentagon for 9-11 survivors and families of those who were killed in the attack. University officials say that they still don't know who committed a sexual assault more than a week ago. A code blue message said it happened off campus at a Ferrari house on the Saturday, August 31st. The report was made to university officials by a third-hand source the following Thursday. Because of the ties, the ties the Ferrari house has to USU officials that say they had to send a timely warning to students. Students, university officials say this is a reminder for students to watch out for one another. We really rely on active bystanders, we call them upstanders here, to step in, um, to call authorities, to say something, to intervene in some way in order to stop problematic behavior. Dorito says they do not have any more information than what was released in the report. Have you ever, have you ever felt unsafe on campus or wondered how to get in contact with campus security? USU launched a new app that can help. I went to this like cool self-defense class and <laughs> <laughs> like Kappa Delta sorority members say they have felt unsafe on campus at night. We have to risk our life, risk a lot of things to go home late at night at 12. I don't know if it's necessarily because I'm on campus, more like I'm just a, a woman alone at night because it's normally when I'm like walking home from the library at midnight and I just get a little uncomfortable. Sometimes on campus it gets really dark so I always have to walk where it's really light and make sure I'm calling a friend or have somebody know where I'm going. If you have ever felt unsafe on campus, USU has an app that can help. Utah State Safe has many resources that can help students feel more secure on campus. A new feature on the app is called Chat with Dispatch. You can chat with security instead of calling 911. So this might be a feature you want to use if you're in a situation where you feel unsafe and want to contact police, but don't feel comfortable dialing 911 and putting the phone to your ear. The SAFE app can also get code blue alerts, put you in touch with mental health services, and can report sexual assault. We live in a world that we have to have this technology and this ability to keep everybody safe on campus. You can download the Utah State University Safe app from the App Store. Have you ever left your phone in your car? What happens if there's an emergency and you can't dial 911? Emily Hill is live on campus to tell us what you can do. Yeah, Kaden, you know, it can be really intimidating walking back to your car by yourself late at night, especially if you don't have a phone. That's why Utah State Police have put these around campus so you don't have to. Emergencies like these are what people typically think of before pressing this button. Several USU students 
say they think these phone posts are for those type of emergencies only. I haven't encountered any problems walking through here, so I haven't felt the need to use one, but I also don't really know how fast people would respond if I pushed one. I'm kind of hesitant. But they're for more than that. These phones are here to help students in any time of need, even a personal safety escort where an officer will make sure that you're, you get in your car safely, that your car starts, and that you're on your way. There are 29 of these phones around campus, outside of apartment complexes, or at the ends of underground tunnels. If you do need to use one, you'll click the red button, wait for a response, and then wait at the pole for an officer to arrive. If your car won't start, the officer can make sure that they can jump start that car and, and get the, that individual on their way safely. Or you're in a more serious situation, press the red button. If you're not near one of these and you do have your cell phone, you can download the new Utah State Safe app and reach dispatch immediately. Live in the engineering building, Emily Hill. Back Th to you, Kaden. Oh, thanks, Emily. University officials say the demand for mental health services at Utah State is steadily growing. The Student Mental Health Program, also known as Aggie Wellness, is available to all USU students. We hope that more students have taken advantage of the services that we offer and are uh, addressing their mental health needs. Uh, that really is the bottom line and the goal for all of these changes. They've increased tuition fees by a small amount per student to hire more faculty members to help in the psychology department at CAPSA and to help with the Student Wellness Center. Whether it's at the Student Wellness Center or the counseling and psychological services located here on the third floor of the TSC, the staff have one goal. That goal is to help any Aggie in need. And with the recent expansion, Getting that help has never been easier. To cope with the high student demand for mental health assistance, USU has hired on two psychologists and a family therapist. Along with more therapists, USU has secured more funds, which they will use to pay their Aggie Wellness interns. Aggie Wellness officials hope that with these new changes, they will be able to help more students in a timely manner. If you have more questions or need help, the link to the Aggie Wellness website can be found on our Facebook page. If you've been to the Fine Arts Building recently, then you may have noticed something missing. The artist block is closed. The space where the cafe was is now an empty corner in the Fine Arts Building. Students who used to visit the cafe say they miss it. I've got three hour classes going on right now and it's not enough time in between them to go somewhere else to get food like the library cafe. Beyond just the food, it was also a place where students of the Kane College of the Arts could meet each other across disciplines. The chalk is still on the wall, but even dining services couldn't get us a clear answer as to what's next for the empty cafe. If you've been on campus lately, you've seen that Aggie Boulevard has undergone some changes. On to cross. Walk sign is on 16, 15. That's the sound you'll hear at the cross at the cross the new crosswalk the new other changes include new bike lanes and several new dividers to stop jaywalking officials say these changes are meant to bring the campus together no matter what form of transportation you are taking uh, there's a place for you and we're hoping that it'll increase According speed and to safety the for people who are trying office, to get around the changes is, are part of a series planned to take place over the next few years. Well, with all the construction, hopefully the weather is clear. Austin, hopefully you could share some good news for us after the break. Is the rain going away? That's the big question. I'll tell you if you need to pack some sunscreen or an umbrella this weekend. Current temperature in Logan is 59 degrees. And coming up, find out why these students are up their ears in corn and other produce.
back, you may have noticed demolition crews around campus. ATV's Austin Elder shows you where projects are and when you may expect them to be done. 60-year-old dorms were ripped apart on Utah State's campus. We started about three weeks ago. We had another machine specifically for tearing down tall buildings. This building was a seven-story dorm on campus called Valley View Tower. With this heavy equipment, Mackie says... We're just in the process of hauling everything out so that they can bring in dirt and fill it back up to level. Next year, the plan would be to tear down the other, the other building, according to my knowledge. From multiple new housing projects to a remodeled biology and natural resources building. To a new parking garage standing right here across from the College of Arts. With all these projects, you might be seeing construction until you graduate. Numerous projects, from uh, smaller remodels to, to bigger projects. We're uh, in the neighborhood of uh, 30, 40 to 50. With all this new construction going on during the school year, Students say, Overall, it's not too big of a distraction, just a little bit of noise. As you see here, the biology building is still very intact. The core of the building that was still in great shape. They're going to completely just leave the structural aspect of it, got everything that's not necessary so that they can repurpose it. We're excited about the way the university is progressing and uh, the, the growth in the students and, and everything else. It's, uh, it's a great community. Austin Elder, ATV News. Construction crews say the construction on campus won't be done anytime soon. Swampy and deserted, Kendall Douglas shows how some fishermen are still enjoying the lake, even with the growing algae. Want to go for a swim in this? The green algae is still blooming at Manaway. The lake looks like someone poured antifreeze in it. But that's not enough to stop the fishermen from casting. I haven't noticed a difference in the bite or how the fish have been acting today. Cody lives in Springville and drives nearly two hours to fish in the scum. Today, obviously, I can't see through the water, so that affects me a little bit. It's a little obnoxious, but, you know, just gotta roll with it. Fish are being caught, and the boat launch is completely empty. On Saturdays, boats are usually waiting to get in the water, and now there's no line. The docks are empty as well, and the birds have taken over. A lot more fish are active. Yeah, a lot less people disrupting the water. It's kind of dead though. I feel a little lonely out here. Actually, one of my good buddies introduced me to bass fishing, and this is where we started fishing. This seems like the only place I can actually catch bass. Although there is less people on the beach because of the green algae and less boats, it does make it more difficult to fish because you can't see where to cast, so you're just guessing the entire time. It's called fishing for a reason. If you were always catching stuff, it'd be called catching, right? I love this place. Kendall Douglas, ATV News. The Bear River Health Department announced yesterday they closed North Beach due to the high amounts of algae bloom. Austin Elder joins us for weather. Please tell us we are starting to see some sunshine. You know we are. Well, things are going to start getting br brighter outside, but the past few days have definitely been a bit stormy outside. <clears throat> we saw some heavy rainfall in hell Sunday afternoon with over half an inch of rainfall and winds getting as high as 16 miles an hour. Tuesday afternoon, we saw some larger hailstones falling much longer than Sunday with winds reaching up to 12 miles an hour. Let's check out what's happening nationally. So here across the country, we've definitely got several different weather systems that are gonna be going across. Where I wanted to touch on right now is over on the Florida coast. Some of you may have heard about the hurricane over the past couple of weeks, Dur uh, Dorian. Um, there has been, uh, there is about a 40% chance of a cyclone that's gonna be happening um, in the Bahamas and then over into Florida. But going through the rest of the country, um, most of the weather is going to be up in the northeast. Now let's jump over to the, the state forecast. Now the, the bulk of our uh, precipitation is definitely around the Salt Lake and Provo area. We do have some currently up in the Logan area as well. It's going to be mostly shifting um, east as everything keeps going. 
Um, now let's jump over to the seven day forecast. So today we've definitely had quite a bit of rain showers, um, right? You know, it's got a 60% chance of rain going throughout the rest of the day. Tomorrow we get a little bit warmer, about 69 degrees is a high, partly cloudy, low you can expect about 43 degrees. Now this weekend, definitely want to plan to finish out your summer off right. We've got a very nice weekend, so that way we can have fun with the family, fun with the kids. You know, this high, we're going to get up to 83 degrees this weekend. Low is about 55, so I think it's perfect for camping. Now, definitely um, going to want to do everything like that before the, the, the beginning of next week. We've got s possible Sunday, or uh, possible showers going into Tuesday with a high about 70, lows getting about 49. Um, everything, um, that's basically what we got with the news. Um, let's see. Looks like we took out the sweaters just to, just in time to put them back away. It's nice to know my weekend plans won't be ruined by the weather. And it sounds like it'd be a nice weekend to visit the local zoo. Do you think lemurs are cute? You can see for yourself in a new exhibit here in Logan. Zoo at Willow Park showcased the zoo's new feature and exhibits. Zoo has got an early look at the new enclosures and programs Zoo has been working on the last year. One new enclosure has zoo workers and some animals climbing with excitement. Earlier this spring we brought in three ring-tailed lemurs mm -hmm. and we wanted to have a bigger exhibit for them and so uh, with the work of, of Duckworks they helped us fabricate and construct that new lemur exhibit. We're pretty excited for that. That's, that's the big one. Zoo says they're planning more exhibit areas and a playground. Where can you go to get fresh produce grown organically? McKay Jensen found a group of students growing all sorts of fresh produce. You can get tomatillos, lemon cucumbers, peppers, and tomatoes at the Student Organic Farm located across the street from the Innovation Campus. Oh my goodness. We have like 40 to 50 different crops. And in the spring, you'll find all of the hardier plants like the leafy greens. And then as we get into the fall, you'll find more squash and tomatoes and all that fun stuff. Students at the organic farm do everything from planting to harvesting. The students who work on the farm are able to get paid and to also use the job as an internship. Martin says these are great benefits, but the job has its other rewards. For me, it's watching the plants go from something small to what we can harvest because we watched it with everything. We watched it from cool season stuff. You put in a tiny transplant, and all of a sudden we have a big plant in a few weeks. We can harvest it and give it to people. Martin says the majority of their crops go to who they call shareholders. So it's called the Community Supported Agriculture. So basically we have people that buy a share in the farm, and then we give them vegetables every week. We had 53 this year. Wednesdays, they sell their produce on campus outside of the TSC and donate some to local charities. McKay Jensen, ATV News. Israelison Israel says the organic farm will have a harvest festival on October 12th. People's peaches and a whole lot of fun. Brigham City hosted a 115th annual Peach Days over the weekend. Thousands of people from all over Utah filled the streets to ride the carousel, check out local boots, and look over at 900 classic car in the show. The mayor says Peach Days is special because it brings people together. People who grew up here come home to be with their families. Peach Days. We have family reunions uh, on, this, on this weekend. Peach Days is always the weekend after Labor Day. Wow, Peach Days sounds like a lot of fun. It does. I'm sad I missed, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sad I missed Peach Days this weekend, but I am glad I got to see the football game. Oh, absolutely. The game was one that you didn't want to miss. Coming up, I'll tell you what record the Aggie football team almost broke and which high school football star might not be playing on Friday night. It was filled with dozens of bags of bread. And one man's trash is another man's lunch. We'll tell you where you can find some good eats if you can stand the smell. Word. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. 
You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome to ATV Sports. Today we've got a lot of touchdowns, but there's a few other things sprinkled in the middle. I'm Adam Larson. Let's get right into it. Utah State football took on Stony Brook Saturday and they put on a show. Players and fans were excited for the first home game of the season and the first home game for Coach Gary Anderson in his second stint with the Aggies. Anderson finished his first stint with a 26-24 record before leaving for Wisconsin. Jordan Love started his day off with a deep pass to Jordan Nathan here. Utah State would fumble on the drive, but Devin Tompkins took the punt return to the house to score the Aggies' first touchdown of the night and his first touchdown return of the season. Love would throw for over 200 yards in just the first quarter, including this dart to Siosi Mariner for the touchdown. The Aggie defense was also heavily involved, getting a stop here and not allowing any points from Stony Brook in the first half. Utah State had 14 different players make a catch in the game, including this nice one by Caleb Rep. Aggies would have almost as many yards on the ground as they did through the air, thanks to several long runs, including this 28-yarder by Jalen Warren and a 54-yard touchdown run on the Aggies' next drive. What a run right here by Warren. He finished with 105 rushing yards in the game, and the Aggies had over 300 yards rushing as a team. Quarterback Henry Columbia threw his first touchdown of the season, as Utah State played three quarterbacks in the game, all three of them scoring touchdowns after Andrew Peasley took this one 59 yards on the ground for the touchdown. Peasley did get injured later in this game, bringing Columbia back in to throw for another touchdown, capping off a 62-7 win for the Aggies. Utah State's 62 points is the second most under Coach Anderson. The Aggies' next game is at San Diego State on September 21st. USU wants a look in your bag before you can get into a football or basketball game. The Aggies instituted a new bag search policy coming up starting this season and going into next season. Prohibited items include alcohol, smoking devices, noisemakers, fireworks, lasers, camera lenses over four inches, bikes, scooters, skateboards, any sort of tripod, stadium chairs with legs, coolers, drones, heaters, strollers, umbrellas, and weapons. A clear bag policy will be in place for Aggie football and basketball next season, so you're going to need to get some clear bags if you want to get into the games. Utah State Volleyball fell to Washington State 1-3, Idaho 0-3, and Portland 2-3 at the North Portland Marriott Invitational over the weekend. The Aggies are now 0-6 on the season. Utah State Soccer beat Marquette 5-1 Sunday behind goals from five different Aggies, and junior Ashley Cardoza was named the America First Credit Union USU Student Athlete of the Week after her performance. Skyview hosted Madison, Idaho Friday in a high-scoring football contest. Here, Mason Falslev extends the Bobcats' lead with his sixth touchdown pass of the season to Kaysen Carlson. And then he took this one in on the ground from 55 yards out for his second rushing touchdown of the season. Falslev leads the Bobcats in passing and rushing yards in 2019, but wouldn't able to be returning to this game after appearing to injure his shoulder. Madison would cut into the Skyview lead with this play, setting up a touchdown run, but it was just too little too late as Skyview took home the win, 45 to 33. Skyview's next game is at home against Green Canyon on Friday night. Bonneville made the trek up to Cache Valley to take on Mountain Crest Friday, and they dominated the rushing game with four rushing touchdowns, the first of them by Brock Samuels here. And then Cameron Jones jukes his way into the end zone right here at the end. What a nice little, little juke right there. Gets into the ground, third touchdown of the game. And Mountain Crest answered with some of the deepest touchdown passes you're going to see this week in high school football. Taden Burbank 
66 yards to Trey Fuller, and then they linked up again for an 85-yard touchdown pass in this game. Bonneville would outlast the Mustangs passing attack, winning 41 to 28. Mountain Crest takes on Logan at home on Friday night. Ridgeline hosted Highland Idaho in a slugfest on Friday. The Riverhawks strike first with Caden Cox's passing touchdown here. One of two for him on the day and they got some great field position here as well with a fourth interception of the season by their defense and Rhett Gerbert returns, setting up another scoring drive for Ridgeline. Cox's second touchdown pass of the first half, but those will be the only points Ridgeline scored in this game as Highland kicked a field goal to end the first half and cut the lead and scored two more touchdowns in the second half to win the game 16 to 13. The Riverhawks open region play against Bear River at home on Friday. And that's everything we had this weekend in traditional sports. Sounds like a lot of fun on weekends full of football. Who's got prompter? Where are we going? Fanex Salt Lake Com Comic Convention took place this weekend, making the seventh year of the convention. According to the Fanex website, 110,000 people attended during those days. You could find vendors, actors, and people dressed as everything from Iron Man to Darth Vader. If you missed this year's Fanex, don't worry. Next year's event is scheduled for September 17th to the 20th. Finding free food may be easier than you think. ATV's Shay Densley shows us how dumpsters can be the source of your late night snack. People are finding food in dumpsters as businesses throw out their leftovers at the close of each day. I decided one night to go to Lee's Marketplace and I went to their dumpster and the first night I went it was filled with dozens of bags of bread and tons of little plastic containers full of you know strawberries grapes berries you know any all that kind of stuff most food thrown out at the end of the day is placed in plastic bags or boxes making no contact with the other trash if students feel comfortable with taking food out of the dumpster that's just food that would have been wasted otherwise and if they feel like it's clean and safe to eat i feel like it's a great opportunity little caesars is definitely one of them. Like, I remember just like, I think one day I was just near there and I, the store was closing and I saw some employees, they just had a stack full of pizza boxes that they just took to the dumpster and put them in. So yeah, I grabbed those. This dumpster belongs to the Little Caesars in Providence. And if you come here late at night after closing, you can find fresh boxes of pizza. Go ahead and take it home or take it with you to a party. Some students see past the stigma of dumpster diving and see benefits for both themselves and the community. When it's like seen as just garbage, you're seeing, I guess people see it as sort of like you're poor or you're disgusting, but in reality, I think it's just a better use of resources. It's being more environmentally friendly. It's being responsible and staying within a budget. Whether it's a loaf of bread or a hot and ready pizza, both can be found at any time of the year in a dumpster. For AT if you're in the mood for something sweet, divers say Krispy Kreme is another location where you can go dumpster diving. Our team here at ATV News has an exciting announcement. Some of our team is nominated for a Rocky Mountain Student Emmy Award. Zachary Aedo's story on Bicycle Brent was nominated for Best General Assignment Reporting. Ayana Likens got a nomination for her story on a deaf keyboard artist. And our Cash Rendezvous show from December 2018 is up for Best College Magazine show. We will find out if we won this Saturday in Arizona. Thank you for joining us on this edition of ATV News. Catch all the latest editions of ATV News on our Facebook page.